What's going on YouTube family? Today we're gonna to be talking about how dealerships are closing all across the United States. So every week when I go to the auction, I try to drive the same way just to see how the market is here in Vegas, to see what dealerships are closing, which ones are basically shrinking inventory, and which ones are having problems. And every week we notice more and more dealerships unfortunately closing down. I'm sure in your local areas, if you drive around, you're gonna see not only franchise stores, but small independent stores closing up as well. So I'm gonna explain how all this will affect not only your city, but actually how prices are not gonna go down if more dealerships close. And we're gonna discuss from the independent side as well as the franchise side. Now, when it comes to small independent dealers, our lifeline is our financing, whether that's financing to buy cars or financing to sell cars. These are the two most critical things that affect dealers. Now, as of right now, both of these things are under heavy scrutiny and basically squeezing dealerships out of business. First, we'll talk about the lending aspect. Now, it is harder more than ever to get banks to actually finance a car. They don't wanna do it because they don't wanna assume the risk. Delinquencies and defaults are at an all-time record high. People don't have down payments, which is scary. Everybody just wants to buy the most nicest car with no money down out of their pockets. So banks are either requiring a bigger down payment or adding more recourse. Recourse is basically if they do three months, the dealership is married to the bank and married to the deal. So if the customer doesn't make their first three payments, the dealership has to actually pay back the bank 100% in full and then go chase the customer. And these are one of the things that are taking out a lot of dealers. If you sell you know, 60 to 70 cars every single month and let's say 10 of those people decide to never make their first payment and to dip out, that's enough money where it could be upwards of $100,000 where a dealership has to pay back to the banks and they're out of business. They don't have the money. And so little by little, these banks are squeezing out the dealers. But then on top of that, they're just walking away from doing business in certain cities and states. Now, I live in Las Vegas. When I first started my dealership, I had 27 banks. I had great financing for prime, subprime, deep prime, whatever it was, I had something for everybody. But one of the main reasons why I sold my dealership back in 2020 was because there was no banks here. Nobody wanted to do business in Nevada. People would rather blow their money on hookers and blow than make their car payment. So I said, you know what, let's just get out of this before it gets ugly able to sell that and then like I said just do buy here pay here and rentals and everything else but now it's starting to affect other states now usually it starts on the coastal cities like you know California um, now it's hitting Florida Georgia all these other ones all this fraud and now it's moving inward to the Midwest and once it finally hits the Midwest that's when we need to panic and that time is now I'm starting to see banks basically shut off dealers from Texas um, Kansas Ohio um, even some parts in Idaho like just Dealers being told they're no longer accepting deals, um, don't send anything in, they're basically turning the faucet off. And the reason why they're doing this is because they're leaving more money free for the franchise dealers because they believe that a franchise dealer will do more due diligence on a deal than an independent, which if anybody's worked at a franchise store knows that's complete BS, but that's what they do. Every time the time gets hard, they turn off the faucet with independents, let them dry out, and then they basically chase the money for the franchise stores. So now, dealers can't sell cars. And I'm also gonna talk about the financing of the flooring companies. Now, the flooring companies basically is a big line of credit that gives you money to buy cars. So let's say you buy this G-Wagon for $20,000 at the auction, right? You got a good deal. So here we go, here's 20 grand. Now, every month, your flooring company is gonna charge you fees and interest. And so the longer it sits on your lot, every month, every week, every day, the money just keeps going up and up. So when people are saying, oh, well, I want dealers to drop the prices of cars because it's been there for 60, 90 days, I'm gonna tell you what happens. Remember, they bought this car for $20,000. What's been happening the last six months? Values have been dropping quickly. Not prices, values. So if this dealer tries to take this G-Wagon back to the auction, because remember, they have $20,000 invested. They probably put, you know, a couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand dollars in recon. And then they have all these carrying costs on top of that. So now let's say they're into the car $24,000, $25,000. But now the car is no longer worth twenty; dollars It's worth maybe seventeen. dollars Now they're upside down even more because remember the value of the cars, now that everything's back to normal, are going to be going down, not up. So now this dealer is in too much for this car. They can't drop the price. They don't have banks that will pay over LTV, like 150, 160%. So what is a dealership to do? They gotta wait for the one person that has the big down payment. And guess what? In this economy, people do not have the big downs anymore. And if they do, they usually want a brand new car. They don't want a used one. So now they're gonna have to put big money down on a car that's overspent, and the average interest on a used car as of now is somewhere around 12%. So imagine paying 12% on a luxury SUV 
that you have to put maybe a ten to fifteen thousand dollar down payment on. People are not going to want to do it. They're going to walk away from it. So dealers can't sell these cars. What do they do? They keep paying this interest, and then eventually they take the car to the auction. They lose. Let's say they sell it for twenty grand. They break even. They stole all the money from the sales fee plus the money they invested in. So each time they sell a car, it adds up. Now remember, every time you drive by a dealership, there's not just one car there. There's 10, 20, 30, 300 cars sitting there. So just imagine every month, every dealership's car costs anywhere from a $500 to a $1,000 payment. And so that will literally let the numbers sink in that these dealers are paying thousands of dollars in curtailments, interests, payments, penalties, just to keep their business afloat without selling a single car. And this is why it's starting to bleed a lot of dealers dry. Now I know a lot of people are like, well, that's good. You know, they've been ripping people off for so long and they made so much money and everything else. Well, remember, majority of your sales tax comes from a dealership. Most used car dealers and new car dealers pay for, you know, your teachers, fixing your roads, a lot of other stuff. And so it's one of those big things that used to be where if you were a dealer, you were part of the community. You did something to either sell cars or to service them. You were, like I said, a crucial part of your community. But nowadays, unfortunately, people don't look at it that way. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the franchise stores and talk about why they're hurting and why they're in so much trouble. Now, as you guys know, new cars are just not selling. They're way too overpriced. From 2019 to 2024, new cars went up on average across the board from all the manufacturers about 27%. Now, typically it goes up maybe two to 3% every year, but you can see we had a massive jump in those four years. So now new cars are so far basically unaffordable, most average Americans can't buy them. And when interest rates are, like I said, at 15, 16% to buy used if you have okay credit, if you have good credit, there are some programs now that are giving you maybe five to 8%, but there's usually some sort of thing where you gotta pay 100% of the MSRP to get this lower interest rate. So now that these dealerships can't sell these cars, what does this mean? What happens? Well, every franchise store has a contract with the actual manufacturer that they have to accept so many vehicles. The perfect example I'm going to be using is Dodge Chrysler Jeep, which is Stellantis. Now, if you are a one of those dealers, a Stellantis dealer, you have to buy cars no matter what. So let's say that your allocation is maybe 20 trucks every year. So you get 20 trucks in. You sell 10 of them this year. You're great. I sold 10, but you still have 10 from 2023. And then now we're here 2024, they give you another 20 trucks. You're still trying to sell these things. You're trying to get rid of them. But remember, when you're a franchise dealer, I can't do anything crazy. If the MSRP is, let's say, $60,000 on this truck, I can't sell it for 40 to get rid of it. I have to sell it for $60,000. That's part of your franchise agreement. You have to maintain a certain price, just like McDonald's. If they tell you that the Big Mac in your area sells for $60, you're gonna have to sell that Big Mac for 60 bucks. You can't sell it for cheaper, can't sell it for more, can't sell it for less. That's just what it is. And so now these dealers are stuck in a corner because they can't sell these cars, they're too expensive, and every quarter they're getting more and more cars thrown on top of them. Now the scary statistic I saw from Cox Automotive was that 70% of their 2024 models are still on dealership floors. And even scarier than that is 20% of their 2023 models are still sitting on dealership floors, which has never happened before. I usually see people give fire sell if they're over a year and a half old. But as you can see, they're still holding on to them. In just a few months, we're gonna be getting 2025s, 2026s, and it's just gonna keep rolling on and on. What are these dealerships to do? Now, there are a few cases where Dodge dealers are actually closing down, they're walking away, they don't wanna mess with Stellantis anymore. But there's one, I believe, I think it's in North Carolina, where they're trying to basically walk away, and they have this really cool thing where if they close their dealership, the manufacturer has to buy back all of their cars, which I believe was like $180 million worth of vehicles. But the manufacturer's fighting against it, saying that they did it in bad faith. They ordered them as pre-orders because they wanted to have a big supply because most of these dealers started ordering in big supplies because they didn't know when they were gonna get them again. But now nothing's selling, they're overflowing with cars. So this dealer supposedly has over 3,000 vehicles sitting on their dealership lot and they're just gonna walk away from the whole thing and Stellantis has to buy it back. And Stellantis is now suing because they don't wanna take that car back because they know they can't sell it. Dealers all around the United States are telling them, we don't want the allocations, don't give us any more cars. You know, some of these dealers are very upset that they were forced to buy EVs they didn't wanna buy. And that's another nightmare that I'll talk about here in a minute. And so now these dealers are basically stuck with inventory that's overpriced, 
Um, the banks are tightening down, so they're not financing as much. So a lot of the OEM brands are starting to do some sort of selective financing to get people into these cars. That's why you're seeing like 2% down or some special leases or lower interest rates to trick people into buying these overpriced, you know, Dodge Ram trucks. I know people could be like, it's a Ram truck, it's not a Dodge Ram. Shut up, it's a Dodge. But they're gonna overpay for these cars and that's the only way they can stick them in there is by overpaying and basically guarantee them low interest so they can qualify for the payment. But guess what? Second you drive off that lot, you're upside down. And this is the other thing that's hurting franchise stores. Over the last three years, they've been screwing people and putting the screws to them and maxing out everybody's credit. So now typically dealers expect customers to come back every two to three years to trade in. But guess what happens? All the people that bought in 2021, 2022, they're coming in today. What do you think is the first thing they're told? They're upside down and not just a little, way upside down. Because remember, people were paying 20, 30, $40,000 over MSRP. If you're one of these knuckleheads that were paying almost $200,000 for a, a Challenger, you're way upside down. You're pretty much, you're, you might as well be buried in that car because you're screwed for life. And that's what you're seeing with a lot of people. So now they basically lost their customer base because they buried everybody. Americans can't afford these crazy high payments, whether it's uh, a car, a truck, like everything is just so unaffordable. So. How did they combat this? Well, they're trying to do some special incentives with EVs now. And, you know, everyone thought the EVs were going to save the world and the market was going to be completely changed. Nothing could be further from the truth. And then on top of that, I remember talking to a few dealers. They were forced to buy, I think it was four or five hundred thousand dollars worth of new equipment to make it EV friendly. You had to buy thousands of dollars worth of chargers, equipment. You had to send your techs and salespeople off to training to learn about these EVs that nobody wants. And so after that, after Insult is spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars building this basically infrastructure, now you're forced to buy all these EVs and you can't drop the price, you can't do anything with them. You have to wait for basically the factory to say, okay, we know they're not selling, we're gonna give you $5,000 off. We're gonna give you some sort of rebate to let you push that car through. And that's what all these dealers are doing right now. They're all waiting for the manufacturers, the OEMs to say, hey, you know what? Our cars ain't worth it, we need to lower the prices. And if anybody's seen anything with Stellantis, their stuff is so ridiculously overpriced, even Fords. Ford went nuts with the F-150. There's so many special editions. I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head because it's just another excuse for somebody to charge three, four thousand dollars over MSRP to make more money. And so now it's just a complete shit show. People can't buy cars. So what are they doing? They're closing up. Now, typically these dealers would sell it to a major auto group like Auto Nation, Sonic Auto Group, Penske, um, Lithia. You know, they're always bought up by all these companies because they make money and they want to build their brand. But if you've noticed lately, a lot of these dealerships are not getting bought up anymore. Why do you think that is? It's because they're not profitable. The least desirable dealership to be purchased is a Stellantis dealership right now. People are basically pretty much putting them up for sale and nobody wants them. Now, I, if I had enough money in the backer, I would buy one just for fun, just to see if we can kick the franchise out. But you're starting to see people walk away from these dealerships because if they can't sell them to these groups, they're forced to sell these overpriced cars that they have to pay out of their pocket. And just like an independent dealership, these guys have flooring lines too in the millions. So imagine buying, being forced to buy I don't know, a uh, hundred Ford Lightnings. And now you got to sell these things. And then on top of that, of uh, buying them, you're paying, you know, thousands of dollars of interest every single month because, you know, you have to. Ford requires you to buy these because you have to buy so many on their line of credit and pay this amount of interest to sell to customers. That's why you're going to see more and more dealerships starting to close down. But I would love to know your opinion in the comment section below. Did you know that franchise dealers are actually forced to buy a lot of this EV stuff? And also, did you guys know that dealerships actually have lines of credit that are charging them seven to eight points above prime, which is absolutely insane. It's higher than most people's credit cards. And you know, this is what they got to do to buy stuff around. And please share if you've seen a lot of dealerships in your area go out of business, how big were they, how many, what city and state you're in, because we want to be more transparent about the automotive industry because I'm hoping that now that things are starting to crumble, people realize that the you know the automotive industry is on the ropes and they need to readjust the market. So like I said, we're at this point now where something has to give. People don't have money, banks don't want to lend, dealers can't sell cars. Somebody's going to have to break. We're at that point right now. So we're just waiting and seeing. But anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next video.